White Flower. Lovely white flowers mark the town. Bloom on every street corner, and beds or fields set aside for their cultivation, blending naturally and in profusion with every row of houses, as though the buildings and the blossoms have grown up together. The season is early spring and snow still lingers on the nearby mountain. The stretch of ocean that gently laps the town's southern shore, aged, fulgent sunlight. This is an old and prosperous harbour town. Even now, each day, its piers see many cruise ships Traders come and go. Its history, however, is sharply divided between the time before and the time after an event that happened one day long ago. People here prefer not to talk about it, the watershed engraved upon the town's chronology. The memories are too sorrowful to make stories out of them. Time knows it. And because he knows it, he's come here once again. Passing through? Abermaster asks him. The sound of his voice can responds respond with a skin smile. You're here for the festival, I suppose. You should take your time and enjoy it. The man is in high spirits. He has joined his customers in glass after glass until now and is quite red in the face. But no one shows any signs of blaming him for overindulging. Every seat in the tavern is filled and the air reverberates with laughter. Happy voices can be heard now and then as well from the road outside. The entire town is celebrating. Once each year, the festival has people making merry all night long until the sun comes up. I hope you've got room for the night, sir. You like to find one. Every inn is filled to overflowing. So it seems. Not that anyone would be foolish enough to spend a night like this quietly tucked away under the covers in this room. Tavernmaster winks at Kaim as if to say, Not you, sir, I'm sure. Tonight we're going to have the biggest, wildest party you've ever seen, and everybody's invited, locals or not. Drink, food, gambling, women. Just let me know what you want. I'll make sure you have it. Kaim sips his drink and says nothing. He is planning to stay awake all night. He has not taken a room. So he has no plans to enjoy the festival either. I will be offering up a prayer at the hour before dawn, when the night is at its darkest and deepest. We will leave the town, sent off by the morning sun as it pokes its face up between the mountains and the sea. Just as he did at the, the time of his last visit. Back then, the tavern master, who a few minutes ago was telling one of his regular customers that his first grandchild was about to be born, was himself just an infant. This one's on me! Drink up! says the tavern master, filling Kaim's shot glass. He peers at Kaim suspiciously and says, You did come for the festival, didn't you? No, not really. Don't tell me you didn't know about it. You mean you came here by pure chance? Afraid so. Well, if you came here on business, forget it. You'll never get a serious talk out of anybody on a special night like this. Tavernmaster goes on to explain what is so special about this night. You must have heard something about it. Once a long, long time ago. This time was almost completely destroyed. There are two kinds of events that divide history into before and after. One is the birth or death of some great personage, a hero or a savior. The other is something like a war or plague or natural disaster. What divided this town's history into before and after was a violent earthquake. It happened without warning and gave the soundly sleeping people of the town no chance to flee. The crack opened up in the earth with a roar and roads and buildings just fell to pieces. Fire started and they spread in the twinkling of an eye. Everyone was killed. You probably can't imagine it. All I know was what they taught me in school. And what does Resurrection Festival mean to a kid? It was just something that happened once upon a time. I live here and that's all it means to me. A traveler like you probably can't even begin to imagine what it was like. Is that what they call this holiday? Resurrection Festival? Uh-huh. The town was resurrected from a total ruin to this. That's what the celebration is all about. Time gives the man a grim smile and sips his liquor. What's so funny? Last time I was here, 
They were calling it Earthquake Memorial Day. It wasn't a festival for this kind of wild celebrating. What are you talking about? Been the Resurrection Festival ever since I was a kid. That was before you were old enough to remember anything. Huh? And before that, they called it Consolation of the Spirits. They'd burn a candle for each person who died and pray for them to rest in peace. A sad festival. Lots of crying. You sound as if you saw it happening yourself. I did. <laughs> you look sober, but you must be plastered out of your mind. Now listen, it's festival night, so I'm going to let you off the hook for pulling my leg, but don't say stuff like that in front of the other townspeople. All of our ancestors, mine included, are the ones who barely escaped with their lives. I knows full well what he's doing. Never expected the man to believe him. He just wanted to find out for himself whether the townspeople were still handing down the memories of the tragedy. Whether deep down behind their laughing faces there still lingered the sorrow, sorrow that had been passed down from their forefathers' time. Called away by one of his other customers, the tavern master leaves Kaim's side, but not without first delivering a warning. Be careful what you say, sir. That kind of nonsense can get you in trouble, really. Think about it. The earthquake happened all of 200 years ago. Doesn't it? Dead? He sips his liquor in silence. Among the ones who died in the tragedy 200 years ago were his wife and daughter. All the dozens of wives and hundreds of children that Kaim has had in his eternal life. The wife and child he had here, especially on the In those days, Kaim had a job at the harbor. There were just the three of them. He, his wife, and their little girl. They lived simply and happily. Same kind of days they had proceeded today would continue on into endless tomorrow. Everyone in time believed that, including Kaim's wife and daughter, of course. Kaim knew differently, precisely because his own life was long without end and he had consequently tasted the pain of countless partings. Kaim knew all too well that in the daily life of humans, there was no forever. This life his family was leading would have to end sometime. Could not go on unchanged. It was by no means a cause for sorrow. But I had a grasp upon forever. Human beings knew how to love and cherish the here and now. I am especially loved to show his daughter flowers. The more fragile and short lived, the better. Flowers that bloomed with the morning sun and scattered before the sun went down. They were everywhere in this harbor town. Lovely, white flowers that bloomed in early spring. Daughter loved the flowers. It was a gentle child who would never break off blossoms that had struggled so bravely to broom. Then, she simply watched them for hours at a time. That year too. Look how big the buds are. They'll be blooming any time now. Dead happily. Did you find the white flowers on the road near the house? More, maybe? I wondered aloud. Absolutely! Wife chimed in merrily. Get up early tomorrow morning and have a look. Poor little flowers, though. Nice when they bloom, but then they wither right away. All the better! Good luck if you get to see them blooming. That makes it more fun. Maybe fun for us! The thing about the poor flowers, they work so hard to open up, they wither the same day it's sad. Well, yes, I guess so. A momentary air of sadness flowed into the room, but Kaim quickly dispelled it with a laugh. Happiness is not the same thing as longevity. What does that mean, Papa? It may not bloom for long, but the flower is happy if it can open up the prettiest blossom and give off the sweetest perfume it knows how to make. While it is blooming. The girl seemed to be having trouble grasping this and simply nodded. With a little sigh, he then broke into a smile and said, Must be true if you say so, Papa. Her smile is more beautiful than any flower in full bloom. He should have said it to her. 
time later regretted that he had not. The words he had uttered so carelessly came to realize turned out to be something of a prophecy. Well now, young lady, if you're getting up early to see the flowers tomorrow morning. You better go to bed right now. All right, Papa, if I really have to. I'm going to bed now, too. Okay, then. Night, Papa. Good night, dear. Already I'm going to bed now. Good night, Sam replied, enjoying one last cup to ease the day's fatigue. These turned out to be the last words the family shared. A violent earthquake struck the town before dawn. Time's house collapsed in a heap of rubble. Time's two loved ones departed for that distant other world before they could awaken from their deep sleep without ever having a chance to say good morning to them. The morning sun rose on a town that had been destroyed in an instant. Amid the rubble, the flowers were blooming. The white flowers that Kaim's daughter had wanted us so badly to see. Kaim thought to lay a flower and offering on his daughter's cold corpse, but abandoned the idea. He could not bring himself to pick a flower. No one. No living being on the face of the earth, he realized had the right to snatch the life of a flower, possessed that life for only one short day. Time could never say to his daughter, you go first to heaven and wait for me. I'll be there before long. Nor would he ever know the joy of reunion with his loved one. To live for a thousand years and bearing the pain thousand years of parting. Time continued his long journey. Dizzy number of years and months flowed by, years and months during which numberless wars and natural calamities scourged the earth. People were born and they died. They loved each other and were parted from the ones they loved. They rejoiced beyond measure, sorrows just as measureless. People fought and argued without end. They also loved and forgave each other endlessly. Thus was history built up as the tears of the past evolved gradually to prayers for the future. Time continued his long journey. After a while, he rarely thought about the wife and daughter with whom spent those few short days in the harbour town. He never forgot them. Time continued his long journey. And in the course of his travels, stopped by this harbour town again. As the night deepened, the din of the crowds only increased, but now a hint of light comes into the eastern sky. Without a signal from anyone. The noise gives way to silence. Time has been standing in the town's central square. The revelers, too, have found their way here one at a time until, before he knows it, a stone bay of plaza is filled with people. Time feels a tap on the shoulder. I didn't expect to find you here, says the tavern master. When Time gives him a silent smile, the tavern master looks somewhat embarrassed and says, there's something I forgot to tell you before. Oh? Well, you know, the earthquake happened a long time ago. Before my mother and father's time. Even before my grandparents' generation. It might sound funny for me to say this, but... I can't imagine this town in ruin. I know what you mean. I do think, though, that there are probably things in this world that you can remember even if you haven't actually experienced them. Like the earthquake. I haven't forgotten it, and I'm not the only one. It might have happened 200 years ago, but nobody in this town has ever forgotten it. We can't imagine it, but we can't forget either. 
Just as Kaim nods again to signal his understanding of the tavern keeper's words, a somber melody echoes throughout the square. This is the hour when the earthquake destroyed the town. All the people assembled here close their eyes, clasp their hands together, and offer up a prayer. The tavern master and Kaim among them. Kaim's closed eyes from the smiling faces of his dead wife and daughter. Why are they so beautiful and so sad? These faces that believe with all their hearts that tomorrow is sure to come. The music ends. The morning sun climbs above the horizon. And everywhere throughout the town bloom countless white flowers. Two hundred years, the white flowers have changed. Scientists have hypothesized that the earthquake may have changed the nature of the soil itself, but no one knows the cause for sure. The lives of the flowers have lengthened. Before they would bloom and weather in the space of a single day, now they hold their blooms for three or four days at a time. Moistened by the dew of night, bathed in the light of the sun, the white flowers strive to live their lives to the fullest, beautifying the town as if striving to live out the portion of life denied to those whose tomorrows are snatched away from them forever. <laughs>